Hello, Internet. Magic Man here again with another episode of Ask MMO Bomb, the show where you ask questions, we give you answers. As you can see, I'm getting ready for Halloween here at Magic Man's house. Next week, these pumpkins will be carved. Maybe they'll make an appearance in a future show. We'll see. Uh, one note, I did get a lot of notes on the previous episode with Focus. I know, gang, and I'm going to try and cut that back by making the uh, shot a little larger and keeping my movements to a minimum there. Unfortunately, uh, since I'm not a professional studio, I don't have a camera that uh, is is really, really, really studio quality. The one we have, though, is pretty good, but autofocus is the only way to go on that one, so I'll try and stay still so you don't see me blurring in and out. Sorry, nothing I can do until uh, at some point in the future we get... Uh, more advanced cameras, I guess. So let's get right to the questions that you submitted to last week's show. Our first question. All right, first question comes from Terranova667, who says, Hey, Magic Man, I'm wondering what your thoughts are on the lawsuit against Turbine by Treehouse for a patent that they received in 2012. Now, in particular, they're suing about the games Lord of the Rings Online and Dungeons & Dragons Online, which started in 2006 and 2007. So, do you think this lawsuit even has a chance? It's a good question. A little bit of research has to go into this, though. If you're not familiar with what's going on, Treehouse Avatar Technologies is a company based in Canada who is suing Turbine Inc., which is a Delaware-based company, in the uh, state of Delaware's district court system. Now, what they're trying to do is get a jury trial alleging that Turbine is infringing on a patent that they were awarded in 2012, just May, earlier this year. And I'm going to read this because I don't want to get the title wrong here. The patent was for a method and system for presenting data over a network based on network user choices and collecting real-time data related to said choices. That's what the actual patent was for. So, in digging into this, I found out a couple of things. One, I had to look up the patent, really, to find out exactly what was uh, given to Treehouse in the U.S. patent system. Uh, there's a diagram there and a description, and it's kind of hard to decode, but the abstract, if you read that, actually gives you a pretty good idea of what this system is. It's a system for letting a user create an avatar based on a plurality of attributes each attribute having a plurality of options that are presented to the user. The user then can then select the attributes and the total uh, avatar or summation of all those attributes is stored on a network database server. Think character creator. That's basically the type of system here. Now, I don't know if that's the exact system that they're referring to here, but it sounds a lot like a character creation system where you're presented with choices, hairstyle, hair color that are pre-existing, and you pick certain choices, generate a unique persona, and then that character is saved. So user selects things, and it's saved. So how did they get this patent? I really don't know. U.S. patent law is really ridiculous, and it even gets more so when you add in the fact that this is software-based, which the U.S. patent system and software is even more bizarre than just our U.S. patent system. So how Treehouse was awarded this particular patent and nobody else was, I don't know. It seems to me an awful lot like somebody trying to patent the wheel because nobody else had, and then suing car manufacturers because they put wheels on the cars and they own the patent for the wheel. Uh, just seems very bizarre to me. Uh, now, why would you try to sue, uh, and why in particular would you go for a jury trial? Uh, yeah, that's a bit weird until you start thinking about uh, another big case that was just recent in the news in most countries, uh, Apple versus Samsung. Now, in the UK, I think they did it right. The judge threw out the... The, the case said Apple, you know, no, the, uh, Samsung didn't infringe. Pretty much said that the uh, iPad was cooler <laughs> based on a list of descriptions, but uh, because it was cooler, there you go, it didn't qualify. But in the United States, that was actually a jury trial, Samsung and Apple. Apple was awarded over $1 billion in uh, funds, in restitution, from Samsung by that jury. Now, Samsung's still trying to get that verdict tossed out. But I think it's a good example of why you might go for a jury trial here. I'm not a lawyer, 
and I'm telling you that right off the bat. This is just my speculation on the topic. I assume you go for a jury trial because you try to take advantage of the fact that your jury may not be as technical, technically savvy as they need to be for this type of case, and so you take your chances with a jury trial. Do I think this will ever go to trial? No. Do I think Treehouse is trying to patent troll and maybe money grab a little bit? It sounds like it, at least in my estimation of everything I'm able to find on the situation. Here's the problem with, uh, with it in my book, though. Turbine's owned by Warner Brothers. That's a big dog to try and sue. So, uh, you know, there's, there's other companies that you might have wanted to go after first. I think the danger here, though, is that Warner Brothers may try to settle this out of court just to avoid paying the fees associated with a trial, which is bad news. If Warner Brothers settles this out of court, then it sets a little precedent for Treehouse to say, well, let's go after Blizzard. Well, let's go after all these other companies that produce games that have some type of system for gathering data across a network and presenting it by user choices, which is just about every game you've ever played that has any type of creation optimism and deals with an online universe. So I'm really hoping Warner Brothers doesn't settle out of court. Another danger here is that Treehouse could probably seek an injunction to stop uh, DDO and Lotro online until the case is resolved, which means income is now taken away from Turbine and Warner Brothers has even more incentive to try and settle this out of court to get that revenue stream active again. It's a weird case. I don't think they have a chance if a judge gets a hold of this, uh, but I think they might walk away with some money if Warner Brothers decides they would rather just settle this, get it out of the way, and avoid the costs associated. My personal hope is that Warner Brothers lets this get to a judge or even a jury and that a judge with a little bit of common sense can look at this and say, sorry, you can't sue for a patent six years retroactive. It doesn't work like that. Uh, and maybe even examine why the patent was granted. It's very bizarre how one company snagged up this patent. So yeah, weird situation. In my estimation, it's a money grab, and they just might actually walk away with a little bit of money because the U.S. court system... Very bizarre sometimes, especially when it comes to patents and software patents in particular. Great question, Terra Nova. Next question. All right, so from the email, Calandra100 says, Magic Man, are you wearing sunglasses or gunner lenses? Very observant, Calandra. I'm wearing gunner lenses, and uh, I wanted to do a little bit of a review for you because I know some people have asked uh, if we could do some product reviews, things like gaming mice and stuff like that. And I don't really want to start a show for that because that involves having to get the product, uh, which can sometimes be challenging, uh, especially since I would have to front my own money and that gets pricey. But I, I'll, let me do a little bit of a gunner review for you. So let me show you these. These are the uh, Gunner Advanced Gaming Eyewear Glasses. Now, uh, full disclosure here, Gunner was nice enough to actually send us uh, a few pairs for review purposes. So they sent us a few regular non-prescription glasses in the gaming style of frames. Now, I got these for zero. Okay, so there's a certain incentive there. Maybe I'm biased. Hold on a second. Let me explain. The ones I am wearing are not the gaming style lenses. You can see that they're more the normal traditional glasses, maybe not so traditional because they don't, you know, hook, but uh, more traditional frames. And these are actually prescription lenses. When I try to do a review for these, my eyeballs hate contact lenses, and so it really didn't work. I couldn't get an accurate representation of what the glasses were, uh, were trying to accomplish. So, I had my eye exam anyway, so I ordered a pair, uh, and after insurance and all that stuff from our lovely U.S. medical health care system, I paid about $130 for these uh, out of my own pocket. So I think that entitles me to a pretty darn fair review since I shelled out my own cash for these and wasn't comped a pair. However, that is a benefit for you guys because we're going to give away two of these pairs. I'll explain more about that in a minute. So if you're not familiar with gunner lenses... What they do is they are marketed towards people that game for long periods of time, or in more in general, they're marketed towards people that stare or have to look at digital displays, computer monitors, things like that, 
for long periods of time. So they're marketed directly to people like me. Uh, besides doing this stuff for MMO Bomb, most of you know that in my day job, I have to look at a computer for a long time doing software development and database management and things like that. Excel sheets and numbers galore. So I spend quite a bit of time staring at a laptop screen, a desktop screen, digital displays of that type. So these were marketed exactly to my demographic. Uh, going away from gaming a little bit, people that work in call centers. I used to do that for a while. You stare at a monitor for a very long time. You end up having uh, working under fluorescent lights for a very long time. It can be pretty harsh on the eyes. So what does Gunner claim to do? Well, they do a couple different things. First off, the most noticeable is the lens tint. Uh, even in the regular pairs that are not prescription, there is an amber tint to the lens. That is there to filter out some of the harshness of most blues, even some whites, in uh, on the computer display. Uh, the eye has a particularly hard time with blue. Look up wavelengths and why, and, and you'll see why. Uh, so the amber tint is designed to soften that view a little bit to ultimately reduce eye strain, eye fatigue, the little twitch that you might get after staring at a monitor for a while, headaches, that type of thing. Yes, I know there's computer software that does the same exact thing. However, in my experience, the software has been less than stellar on providing an overall clear image while trying to filter that type of stuff out. So Gunner does that with the amber tint. Uh, then they have what they call lens geometry. There's a particular curvature to the actual lens. Uh, now this is designed to keep moisture inside your eye well, by the lens shielding a lot of the outer uh, air. This is kind of like to avoid dry eye. Now, I honestly have to tell you, I could not measure this in any aspect for you. I don't have dry eyes. I'm going to get to, I do occasionally get headaches. I do kind of get the little twitch right here in the left eye after looking at a monitor for a long time. So I can give you my feedback on those. I don't, however, really get dry eyes. It's never really been an issue for me. So I can't tell you if that particular feature does what it's designed to do. Maybe if you've worn a pair for a little while and you suffer from dry eyes, you could put your comments below and let us know. Uh, so that's another aspect. They also have the anti-glare coating. Now, they say they have a prop proprietary uh, method for the coating. Okay, uh, you can get an anti-glare on most glasses, a scratch resist on most glasses, things like that. Now, the material is, uh, is supposed to enable a very clear, crisp image, what they make the lenses out of. And then also, the last kind of uh, bonus feature is on the gaming lenses in particular. The uh, arm... The, the arms here are straight uh, back, just like these, except there's more uh, of a give to them, and they have more of a bow to them. Now, the idea behind that is that when you have them on, if you're a gamer and you have a headset on, is that they don't push into your head since they're spaced out and they have a little bit of give to them. Uh, so all in all, what do I think? I've been wearing this prescription pair now for about two and a half, three weeks, and I wanted to give it some time before I, I told you guys what I thought about them. In general, I like them. I'm a dork for gadgets and gaming and things, just electronics in general. You guys know that. So in general, I do like them. Uh, however, there is, if you get a regular pair, there's also a slight magnification to them, so it kind of does make the image pop a little more, particularly when looking at numbers and spreadsheets and stuff. Um, so do they do everything that they set out to do? Yeah. I mean, the amber tint does provide uh, a less harsh screen. The magnification, even on a regular pair, is you're not going to notice it when you have it on, but when you look at a monitor, you definitely notice that the image pops a little bit for you. Uh, the glare, obviously, the coating there works and everything. So, uh, do they do what they advertise? For the most part, yes. Uh, you'll have to do your own research as far as the moisture. I haven't had as many headaches uh, from long usage. Uh, every once in a while when I do get that twitch, I haven't really gotten that. So, is it placebo effect or is it the actual glasses doing what they say they're going to do? I don't know. You decide. I will tell you a couple of things, however. They're not cheap. Uh, even the gaming ones are 80 bucks, uh, starting at 80 bucks, and go up from there. From there, these are the uh, vapor uh, frames, and they're the mercury color. These were 79 dollars. We have one more color that we're going to be giving away too. Um, so yeah, they're a bit pricey, 
do they do anything that a normal pair of like those reader glasses that you see at drugstores and pharmacies do? Um, well, yeah, I mean, they do magnification, so you have that feature, but then you have the amber tint and everything. It gets really dicey because there really isn't a feature on here that you couldn't get on another pair of glasses. Uh, you could go to your eye doctor and order a regular pair of prescription glasses and ask for an amber tint. You can ask for anti-glare coating. You, you can do all of those things. You may pay a little bit more. I don't know. You'd have to map it out. In general, though, I would give these about three and a half to four stars if I was rating them on a star system for you. Really, they're cool. The frames look much cooler than anything you're going to buy in a, in a drugstore to help you. Are they going to make you a better gamer? I've seen some people say that. No! No, they're not going to make you a better gamer. They're not going to make you a better gamer any more than taking a, uh, um, trying to play Call of Duty with no glasses versus prescription glasses if you wear prescription glasses. Well, of course you're going to be better with your glasses on. You can see the damn game. Uh, but they're not going to make you a better gamer just by throwing them on. But, in my experience, they do just about everything they claim to do. They may be a little pricey for most people, so take a look at that. That's really the only thing that's stopping me from going a little higher on the rating. All in all, to me, I like them. They're cool. Uh, after about five minutes, you don't even notice that they're amber tinted, and I wear them all day for driving at night, in the morning, and everything. I would recommend them to anybody that suffers from that whole eye strain or headaches thing. Uh, definitely give them a whirl and try them out. Um, and if you're just having a hard time seeing, I would first say go see your eye doctor. Uh, see if you need prescription eyewear first. But uh, once you've done that, if you want to take a look at them, yeah, they're pretty cool. And uh, the frames are a much, much better looking than anything you're going to find on a drugstore set shelf. Three and, a, three and a half to four out of five. Pricing may be a little out there for everybody. But we've got two pairs to give away. They're still in the box, ready to go to you. Unfortunately, due to contest laws, I've got to keep this particular contest, since there's a physical item that I have to ship, uh, into in the United States only. You guys that are international, I apologize on this particular contest, but stay tuned to future episodes where we have contests that are not bound by international or country laws. So here's what I want you to do. If you want a pair of gunners here, I've got two to give away. I want you to put in the comments below where you would use them. I'm looking for the strangest places that you would put them on, and I would like to have you submit a picture of you wearing your gunners in that weird location. It can be in front of your computer. It can be somewhere totally bizarre. The more bizarre, the better. And if we can get a picture of you wearing your gunners in that bizarre location once they've been sent to you, all the better. We'll be sure to post them on the show so that everybody can see you styling and profiling in your gunners. Uh, yeah, so there you go. I'm wearing gunners, not sunglasses. And let that serve as my little comprehensive review for you. I dig them. I can understand why they might not be for everybody. Lower 48 states only. No post office boxes when we uh, contact you if you've won. And we'll pick a winner next week. Next question. All right, so Lazuck says... What's your whole opinion on the first comment? Before I started making any internet content of any type, I hated the first comment. I just thought it was dumb. Now I really don't care. I've just seen it everywhere. Everybody's seen it everywhere, and it really doesn't bother me. However, I do appreciate a very creative first comment when it's done in a creative or funny or even thought-provoking way. I will tell you, though, that if you're really a long-time listener of the Free-to-Play cast, you will know that Free-to-Play cast fans now should not be using the word first. We took user feedback and we elected a winner, and there's a replacement for the word first. It's mounted. And if you want to know why, head on back through some episodes of the Free-to-Play cast and find it out. I'm not going to tell you which one it's on. There you go. I don't mind first, but you should be using the word mounted. If you're an MMO bomber, and I don't care whose video it is, put mounted. Let them wonder. Yeah, that's about it. Next question. All right. Next question comes from Joker333221. Yes, Joker333221. And Joker has this to say. Hey, Magic Man, I don't know if anybody's asked this already, but where did you get the name Magic Man? 
I get that question a couple of times. Uh, it really, there's really no big mystery. Um, when I first started making YouTube videos for MMO Bomb, I didn't know if I was going to be doing many of them or if I was going to be there very long. It was just I saw some videos and I said, hey, I could do that. And so I submitted a first look and here we are a year later, almost a year later. Uh, so it's been pretty cool. And so at that time, I really didn't put a lot of thought into a YouTube handle. Uh, if you look on YouTube, my, my name on there is Claude Magic Man. That's just a, uh, derivation of my Xbox 360, uh, tag. So, yeah, there really wasn't much of a thought. I just went with Magic Man. And if you go back and look at the first video, some people did give me some flag. They're Magic Man. What a great uh, original name and everything. But it kind of fits. Uh, I've been doing professional close-up and stage magic since I was about 12, hence the cards on last week's episode. Uh, and if you go to my YouTube page, there's a video or two of me doing just a card trick for set to music. Nothing fancy. Uh, I was just playing around with putting stuff on YouTube, and I may get back to that. I've had some requests to do so, so maybe we'll get back to that. But check them out. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments below there, too, as well. So nothing uh, nothing too fancy. I was lazy, and I went with a name I already had because I've been doing close-up and stage magic for an awfully long time. Hope that answers it. I mean, it's not that complex. So let's get to our last question today. All right, last question comes from Crooked, who says, all right, I know you've probably seen a surgence of uh, ad-supported video content, sites like Hulu, uh, what else did he give me, Crunchroll and Crackle, sites like that. Do you think there's a place for ad-supported games, or do you think that's the next logical step? For instance, you play a match and then have to watch a short stint of commercials. Or every hour or so, you have to watch a couple of commercials before returning to regular gameplay. Okay, I'm going to take this in two phases, because uh, one, I think you already know, uh, based on the, the way your question was worded, I think you already know that this is a pretty popular format. It's already done. Uh, hit Facebook, hit your mobile gaming on your phone, and you're going to see an ad-supported version versus a shell out 2 or $3, and you don't have to watch commercials. Uh, so you've got that going on. Facebook, we're going to show you a commercial before you play that next round of Slingo. That's already happening. But I think what you were more interested in here, and I hope I'm right here, is do I think maybe something a little more client download type game would uh, would have that type of thing going on? Like a, um, like a Lord of the Rings Online where you download it, play it for an hour, and then you have to watch commercials. Or League of Legends, play a match or two and then watch commercials. Something a little meatier than the Facebook and social uh, social games. I think somebody's going to try it. Uh, in fact, I'm uh, off the top of my head, I can't think of a game in particular, uh, but I'm pretty sure that, that some places have already tried it. The problem I think that you'll run into there, if you're a developer, is you really, really have to create some engaging content for that to be your primary or only method of income, to be ad-supported. Uh, because ads all boil down to eyeballs. If you can't get the eyeballs on the product, then it really doesn't matter uh, how many ads you get there. And if you hope to attract big dog ads like PepsiCo, uh, Coca-Cola, companies like that, you really have got to be able to prove this is how many eyeballs are on our product on a normal basis. And to get those eyeballs, that content better be damn engaging uh, and fun and make me want to play it and uh, and be okay with the commercial. So I think there's a drawback there that's going to going to inhibit a lot of companies from trying it. However, I do think we could see in, in the relatively short future games that are both ad supported and cash shop supported, um, where the, the ad support isn't the primary method of income. Something like when you log into play, you're shown a commercial and then that's it. The rest of the, the time, it doesn't matter. It's only upon login, for instance. I think you'll see some more of that. Uh, I think you'll see some companies try to say, okay, let's do away with the cash shop and everything. Let's make it totally free to play. and Let's make it ad-based. I think the problem with that is it better be a damn good game to keep some eyeballs on that and be worth the time. Uh, you, you put up with it on Facebook because you're, you're only playing a Facebook game for 10, 15 minutes in most cases. You put up with it on uh, Angry Birds on your phone because you're playing that for 10 minutes while you're on the bus. Uh, so really, it doesn't impact you there, but when you sit down to game for three or four or five or however many hours you're going to game that particular day, to be shown a commercial every hour, 
for me to even contemplate playing it, I have to know going in that it's a damn good game. So I don't think you're going to see it in that regard. I do think you'll see some companies experiment with it as a supplementary way of income rather than just cash shop or just sub base. Well, that's all the time we have for today, gang. I want to thank you for stopping by. Stop in next week. Maybe I'll have something done with these pumpkins. It'll be uh, kind of cool for you to check out. If you've got questions, put them in the comments below. Come on over to MMOBomb.com. Look at all the great content we have for you there. Or you can email those questions directly to magicman at MMOBomb.com. Don't forget, for the Gunner giveaway, lower 48 states only, no P.O. boxes. The winners will be selected from the comments on the site and on YouTube on where you would wear your gunners. And we'll send two pairs out to winners, and you guys got to send us your picture of you wearing them in that bizarre location. Until next week, gang, stay safe, and I'll see you on the servers.